Maybe as well. Look at this cat. Hi, cutie. Puss, puss, puss. Puss, puss, puss. Oh, cute. Oh, cuties. Ah, got some stuff organised in here. Got the cabinet in here. Perfect. Dig it in the container. Get some dug in my storage. I'm doing a lot, lot of rearranging. And boy, I found the stuff that I wanted to find. Found my bloody J card diesel phone, but where my own kit is, so I'll have to go further. It's packed up in one of the boxes, I've got to dig them out there. I rearranged my meters and put them in the shelving that I've made. And taken stuff like this out that I didn't really need in there. I can leave these here, just sort through it all and chuck out what I bloody need. Made a fair few um, more spare spots now, which I put the heavy stuff in the shelves in the bottom. Made things easier, this is more rodent proof now. Up the old faithful. I've got my other, oh, my other snap on one I used to use, but I left it behind in the container. I forgot to bring it, so I have to use this old faithful Makita. Old faithful. I can't find a GE being box, that's in there somewhere. I want to do a, um, a line input mod on this. There's a pretty powerful amplifier in it, and nice loud speakers. This thing is so bassy and so loud. But if I turn the volume up any more than a quarter of the rubber of the bass, it bumps the CD and the CD keeps skipping with the bass, so... Yeah. It's a nice boom box, but it won't play CDs if you turn the volume up too much. It's just that laser just trips too easily. <laughs> it's a design flaw with this thing. There's too much bass to the CD player to handle. I can't believe it. Can't even handle its own bass. I'm not going to fix that, put an um, live input on it. So we'll take this thing apart, let's we'll see what sort of IC it uses. The only 2.8 ohm speakers too, so that's why it's so loud and bassy. Low ohm speakers, they get more power and more volume out of them. So, do it with the uh, tape, tap into the uh, leaf switch off the cassette mechanism, but off the um, the amplifier part of it. I won't turn the motor on though, just turn the uh, the input part of it on, which turns the radio, the uh, amplifier on. So I tap off that and just tap off the input off this off the uh, preamp. So let's get this thing apart. I'll probably stick it behind here or something. There's already uh, some damage. That's previous and I did that. The guy I got it off. Got this in my work experience and I started doing work experience. So let's do some uh, pulling apart. Anyway. Got the satellite box so I can go up the parents house, see if the uh, they will work in the Ostar dish. I've got the LNB somewhere in the container, if I've got to change it I will. But we'll see how it reacts to an Ostar um, LNB, Foxtel one. This is shits and giggles, it might do something. <laughs> anyway, put that back there. Get the old faithfuls out, so let's get some screwing going on. <laughs> Okay, we've got an integrated circuit here to Shiba. This goes directly off the heads into that. This is an um, input for the cassette drive. Like ground, left channel, right channel, red, yellow, and black. So that I'll find which one of those is which. There's an integrated circuit there. That's the amplifier chip. Can't quite read what's on it though. It's like a TV, one that's using a TV, but it's a pretty smaller one. Yeah. It's just too dusty, I've got to clean it so I can read what's on it. Okay, it's a Sanya LA4600, 12.5 watt IC. Some fingers under there, like in the wrong part, <laughs> wrong part of the circuit. Red's right, yellow's left, and the blacks are common. Alright. Now I know which one's which. Let's get some wires tapped to it. We'll see how it sounds. In some in cases it won't sound that good, but we'll just um you gotta tap in further under the actual amplifier. Because of how the uh, the head reacts, but we'll see how we go. So we've got these wires here. 
reds or yellows right, reds left. Let's get some connectors from somewhere. See what I can dig up. Okay, I've got those soldered up. Working. Now I think to get this to sound right, I'll have to make up a circuit that disconnects the tape head at the same time this is working. Because this will also go through the tape head, the signal, and that can um, distort the output signal. So let's see how we go. Yeah. We're going to bypass the tape head, make a circuit and switch to bypass that. This headphone thing doesn't have a switch in it. So it'd be nice if I was going to make a switch through here to turn the uh, input on, but not the motor. Yeah, it's just a distorted mess. So, got some work to do. Nothing there, I got it all unplugged. Yeah, something's not right there. I've got something wrong there. Yeah. Depends on the circuit, so I've got to do some tracing and the schematics. It sort of works, it's going to make it where I can bypass the circuitry so I can go directly in and skip all the other... Um, I could go directly into the amp, but then I, get, I won't have any of the equalizers. I want to make it so it works through the equalizers and everything. Anyway, viewers. That'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.